What's up everyone, Draco here. Today in the channel, we're taking a deep dive into a weapon that's all about versatility and crowd control. The SMG-72 Pummeler. This sum machine gun isn't your typical powerhouse. It sacrifices raw stopping power for some unique features that can make it a game changer in the right hands. Let's break down what makes the Pummeler tick. First up, the Pummeler is incredibly lightweight. This lets you ditch the two-handed grip and fire from the hip all while doing other things. Need to break into a building while keeping your shield up? No problem. Gotta carry a crucial package to the objective without sacrificing firepower? Pummeler's got you covered. This kind of adaptability can give you serious tactical advantage in fast paced situations. Don't let the one hand at firing fool you, the Pummeler still packs a decent punch. It's 45 round magazines that you lay down a sustained barrage of fire, perfect for suppressing enemies or clearing out tight corners. Now here's where the pummeler gets interesting. It fires concussive rounds which are designed to stun light and medium enemies. Hit an enemy with a burst from this bad boy and they'll be seeing stars for a few seconds, leaving them open for a follow-up attack from you or your teammates. This is especially useful for breaching rooms or taking down enemies protected by shields. The Pummler offers three firing options. Fully Auto lets you unleash a hail of bullets, perfect for close quarters combat. Semi Auto provides precise single shots for longer ranges. And three round burst offers a balance between the two, ideal for mid range engagements. Now that we know how the Pummler works, let's go over some of the weak points of the enemies, starting with the Terminids. First up, I wanted to go over the light bugs. The light bugs take a couple hits to die from the pummeler. The ones that don't die will get stunned. You can fire backwards while running, which makes this an excellent weapon for dealing with lots of light bugs at once. Next up we have the hive guard. The hive guard will ricochet your bullets from the front. You're going to have to shoot underneath its shield or behind it in order to stop it. Once you start firing it will get stunned which will make it easier to keep it in place. Next up we have the brood commander. The brood commander's weak point is its head. And while you're firing at it, it's going to be held in place by the concussive shots, making this an excellent weapon for brood commanders. Next up we have bile spewers. Now bile spewers will ricochet your shots from the front, but if you shoot the side, it'll actually get stunned, and you can keep firing. It's going to take a clip or two in order to take out the bile spewer, but once it dies, it'll explode, possibly taking out other bile spewers and other enemies with it, causing a chain reaction. Next up we have Stalker's. Now Stalker's weak point will be its head and shooting it with concussive shots will stun it in place making it a lot easier to hit the head. The Pummeler is a great weapon for dealing with Stalker's as you can stun multiple at once. Next up we have Chargers. Now Chargers can be a bit more difficult to hit the weak point as it's behind the charger. If you can keep it stunned in place for long enough with an EMS or a stun grenade you can fire at the thorax. It took me about 3 or 4 clips to destroy the thorax weak point on the charger, but that's because I was partially hitting the armor up on the top part of the thorax. It would probably take less bullets if you were up close and firing. I'd highly recommend bringing a support weapon or a stratagem to deal with chargers as this method is not very useful when there's more than one or you're in a fast paced situation. In a pinch this is possible to pull off though and could save your life. Next up we have Shriekers. Now Shriekers take a lot of damage from the SMG and it's actually pretty good at killing them because of its fast firing rate. You can switch to different firing modes if you find it easier to hit them with it. I just use fully auto myself though and just make sure that you're careful when the bodies are flying at you because they can hurt you. Next up we have Bile Titans. Now the Bile Titans two weak points are underneath its shell where I'm firing at. You can do damage to it, but not a whole lot. You can use this little bit of damage to your advantage though. For instance, if you do damage to it by firing, and then you die and you come down in the hell pod, you can finish off the Bile Titan by landing on top of it. And conversely, if you hit it with a stratagem or a hell pod coming down, and then shoot it a couple times in the weak point, you can actually kill them fairly easily, which I'll show in this clip now in a second. 
So basically what I did was I was firing at the first Bile Titan to see if I could kill it using just weak points, which didn't seem possible. And then after I ended up dying and I come down in the hell pod on top of the Bile Titan, which kills it. And then I realized that the other one that I haven't even hit yet, I can come down in the hell pod and then just shoot it a couple times to finish it off. I haven't tested this with hell bombs and stratagems, but I'm sure it's almost the same. You can see here I finished it off with a couple shots after I came down through the hell pod on top of it. And this is a fully HP Wild Titan. And I came down in the hell pod and damaged it. And then I fire one clip into it to finish it off. Next up we have terminated structures. Now I tested all the terminated structures and it didn't seem like the light penetration was enough to destroy any of them. The only thing that you could possibly destroy would be the bug eggs. Next up I wanted to go over some of the automatons. So starting off with the light bots. Light bots only take a couple hits and only one to the head to die. This gun is really good at wiping out waves of light bots. Being able to run and fire backwards with one hand without losing much speed is very useful when you're trying to dodge projectiles, especially against automatons. Next up, let's go over Berserkers. Now, Berserkers have two major weak points, which would be the head and the midsection. I like to fire at the midsection. I let the recoil naturally bring up the bullets to the head. You can also fire while you're running away from the Berserkers. This is a very good strategy when there's multiple Berserkers at once, especially when they're coming from, like, say, a dropship. And they start to catch up on you, because there's too many of them to stun. I like to reload while I'm moving. Aim backwards and just start firing at the midsection. And this is going to take out and stun a lot of them. You can even take out their arms, as they're also weak points. Next up we have Striders. Now Striders will ricochet your shots from the front shield. It's better to run around them and fire at the light bots that are behind the shield. Next up we have Shield Devastators. Now the Ballistic Shield on the Devastators will reflect your bullets if you're not careful. The weak point is the head and the arm. The head can be hard to hit if you can bring them to the edge of a cliff. Sometimes it'll stop the Gatling gun from firing, and you can eat more easily aim at the head. Next up we have Rocket Devastators, which are basically the same as Shield Devastators, except for they have an extra weak point on the Rocket Launchers on top. I recommend firing at those to stun them. Next up I wanted to go over the tank. Now the tank has a weak point on the back. That's medium penetration, which means that the light penetration on this gun won't actually penetrate it. I fired off multiple magazines at it, just to make sure that it doesn't actually do any damage, and it didn't seem like it did enough to even matter. Tanks are very similar to chargers with this gun, in that I would recommend taking a support weapon or a stratagem to deal with them, because you're not going to be able to deal with them with a uh, SMG with light penetration. Next up we have the Hulk. Now the Hulk's weak point is the solar panel behind it. I recommend stunning it with EMS or a stun grenade and then firing at the solar panel. Because once you're firing at the solar panel, the Hulk won't be able to move anymore and then you can just finish it off. Just be careful that your clip doesn't run out of ammo while you're firing because the Hulk will turn around if you stop shooting it to stun it. Next up, I tested gunships. Now the thing about gunships is they're weakest at their thrusters and I think that this gun ricochets even on the thrush thrusters because the light penetration isn't high enough to go through and if it does do damage it does so little that it's not even worth wasting your ammo on the gunship this is another one of those that i would just bring a support weapon or a stratagem to deal with or you're gonna have a really bad time i also did a little test on factory striders just to make sure that it ricocheted off of everything and I didn't find any specific weak points that I found easy to fire at. You're better off using a sport weapon or a stratagem just like all the other heavily armored enemies when you're using the SMG. 
Next up, we have automaton structures. Now I tested the anti-air and a bunch of other structures, including the cannon turret, which seems to just ricochet off the weak point. It didn't seem like this gun was able to penetrate or destroy any automaton structures. If you found any that were able to be destroyed, let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, share, follow, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.